Well, we've talked about uh, inhaling the tone in the past, inhalare la voce, and in tone, you know, inhaling the voice and drink the tone in, and uh, sliding back and down, and all this terminology. And uh, one thing I thought we should discuss a little bit more is if you use the inhalation technique while you're singing, which works like a charm, let's face it, and you slide back and down, you simply inhale, and uh, these, this particular p technique, this um, inhaling the voice technique, doesn't have a breath stop. It's not <laughs> like hiccuping. If I hiccup, I inhale, but I, I stop the breath on the, on the way in. No, now I can certainly sing that way. A breath stop is a very, very popular technique, and that's been for many, many years. So I can breath stop everywhere. I, dem I try to demonstrate them to people so you can do them anywhere you want. You can go, you know, I use pa, pa, pa as a, leaker, as a leaking one, and pa, pa, pa as a non leaking one. So if I do this, I just remind people of this. See this? Pa, pa. Pa, pa. All right, I'm stopping the breath when I do that. And the question is where now? And we've been through this. There's a, you can just stop the breath about anywhere. But I can stop it right here, and then I sing with the famous uh, Il tono fiorisce sulle labbra, uh, the tone flowers on the lips. So if I go, pa, pa, I stop it right there, I get, and I sing that way, see? What I'd like to talk about today is not stopping, sliding back and down without a breath stop. So if I do, I don't hiccup as I'm inhaling, I go, there's the inhalation, I go, no. What I really want to talk about today was the amount of breath that we breathe in. How big is the air column, the air stream that you are breathing in? If I go, can I sing that way? That's a big air stream, isn't it? So can I sustain that and sing? Well, the answer is yes. I can go, see, the one that doesn't work that very well with that big old sound is uh, the breath stop. But as long as you're inhaling and you have the breath strength, what Caruso called the massive power of the respiration required for great singing. So there's no reason why I can't sing a lot of big music and all kinds of things as long as I'm strong enough to sustain a big air column going inward the whole time. How big a stream can I breathe in and still get through the evening or get through the one act? Sometimes one act is you're exhausted. So you, you sh so then if I don't do that, I want to file it down either for repertory reasons or I want to survive <laughs> and not blow myself out. So I try to get a very small. Now the smallest one that is probably a success, uh, the most successful small one has definitely been smelling the flower. So if I smell the flower and I go, the whole point of smelling the flower is it's covered with pollen and I don't want to disturb the pollen, have any of that pollen dust go up into my nose. So I smell it a very careful way, like this. Like the lion tamer. Well, you ask the lion tamer, how do you put your head into, the, into that mouth of that lion? He says, very carefully. So we are going to breathe this way, very carefully. That We don't get a great big airstream that's going to use us up and blow us out and maybe be wrong for the music and everything else. So I'm going to go... So if I sing music and I'm singing like that, why can't I sing, uh, uh, let's say, what if I do something like Meister Singer? Ooh, let me get this going. Do some bigger music. So I go. Now, that one performance of Meister like Singer is five and a half hours long. Tenor sings the first note and almost the last note. Sings his big aria at the end, as a matter of fact, about ten minutes before the curtain. So, we have to find out what we're strong enough to sustain. But one thing you want to do when you're trying to survive and get through music is not overblow. Now, 
if I start off singing it and I get a much bigger string of air like that. Can I sing it that way? See? And so forth. Can I do that for five and a half hours? Can I do it for five and a half um, weeks? Five and a half years? How long can I sing that big? Some people sing that way easier. I studied with Mario Domonico for almost six months, and of course that's why I learned that sort of thing. But I also studied with Lauris Melchior, another huge, uh, the only probably, well, the greatest of the Heldon tenors. And his way, he had a kind of an intensification technique where he'd go, Hello, hello, hello. Now, how big is that? Uh, how, how, how big a stream of air am I using now? And you might even ask, which direction is it going? Hello, but I can certainly go in if I want to. Hello. So I can do that if I go, uh, um, yeah. That's certainly big enough to sing that music. How big is, how big is my Airstream? You see those little trailers called Airstream trailers, I think. Well, they're all so small. <laughs> is that, is that the, the maximum that my inhalation will achieve in my lifetime? I don't know. Now I'm 83. I'll be 84 in March. It's now, uh, whatever it is, January, beginning, the first week of January. So, 22, 2022. So, the idea is, if, will I ever be able to sustain that great big, uh, by sustain, I mean do it for a whole performance. And uh, someone said, oh, yes, that's his voice. He has a great big voice. Well, he made, got lucky, he made one sound, maybe, and that was it. So, really, this is something to experiment with. If I do the happy surprise, I go, now, how big an airstream does that cause? No. What repertoire would I sing if I use that size uh, inhalation, airstream inhalation the whole time? If I'm going, All right. If I use that in lighter music, what happens? If I go, right? What if I use the the pre sneeze and I do this? That sounds like it's the wrong direction with that music because when I do the priest's knee, my voice gets wider, my phonation gets bigger, and to fill it up, I have to keep a bigger airstream flowing. It's a little bit here what, uh, what came first, the chicken or the egg. Do I make the phonation and then have to match it or have to feed it with the, with the big airstream inward? Or do I make the airstream first and limit my phonation. So if I can go Shall I sing like that? How you is so nice to see you how you been So guys get up and can actually sing that way and get through all operas. It doesn't sound very good, but it sounds nasal and slender, but the the point is that they are able to get up and take the notes. When you're a professional singer, and let's face it, the main thing that matters is you're going to take all the notes. And your colleagues will be some, they'll say, oh, I can't stand it, sound, it's awful. Sound. But meanwhile, they're in the stage or under the stage, and you're out there on it singing some lead role and getting paid for it, see? So if I want to, uh, to work really so, through a sort of a spectrum of a small inhalation that I'm going to sustain, and a bigger one, and maybe find the biggest one that I actually can actually even make a, a sound of, make a note, see? So, 
the, the whole idea of dramatic singing, we know that when we sing bigger, we tend to give more air. But do you understand that you, if I yell at someone, I go, hey! See, what I'm doing is really blowing my air hard and, and, and lifting the voice up so it resonates. But it's that difference of air. Now, what if I want to sing but not yell at my friend? I go, hey! Well, it's still yelling. We're still classifying that. But if I'm singing, I'm still yelling. <laughs> Actually, it's the kind, that kind of singing is very often called yelling. So, but it is, it is sort of based on a yelling principle of letting the phonation in the throat open up, spread a little bit, and then try to fill it up with a great big airstream going inward. So if I, do, if I pick up an airstream on its way in, it's going like this, and I'll just start singing as it passes by, I'll go... How it is about that size. It really is conversational. It is much more speech uh, correct. Correct. It. What's the word? It's more. It resembles more normal conversational speech. Then we start doing that to you, right? I don't want to talk that way. Now, if we're going to do some of this music, let's say we're going to sing some color tour music. Now what? See? So I go. I move my voice better if I've got it all so clogged up with a whole lot of air being a big airstream going in. But I can do it that way. So you can do it, but you better have tons of air. So now this brings us to another whole area, which is capacity. Capacity we dreamed of, capacity we have to have, and capacity that, that your body and the time you have left to develop it. Let's say did you started eight years old uh, playing saxophone like Geely, or did you start like at six years old playing French horn like Fritz Wunderly? Were you a great ocean swimmer like Caruso, a free diver as a child already, right? And without an aqualong, he went down underneath. They, he, he wrote in his book that the, he and the children would dive for coins and things that, the, that the people would throw in from up on the bank, and the kids would dive for them. That's how he spent his summers in the, in the Bay of Naples. He got older, he started swimming out, going out in the deep water and free diving and looking for relics uh, on the bottom that he could sell to the antique dealers, which is interesting. But that develops a breath like mad, doesn't it? Some people are a little exercise prone, so they do jogging and they work out, and they do the rowing machine. Some people just play a wind instrument, some people do tons of yoga. And uh, yoga, like Rose Fanger did uh, yoga three hours a day, and Robert Merrill did it two hours a day, and they'd sit in the, in the yoga postures and go, well that constant breathing activity, I played tuba and the big harmonica, and uh, this exaggerated breathing, of course I did sports, everybody, I, you know, they've all, a lot of them have done sports. Pavarotti was a great tennis player, played tennis all the time. Um, and uh, gosh, I, I, I played a lot, I did a lot of sports, I did a lot of karate and tai chi and, and, uh, and yoga. And all of those things contribute to the next molecule <laughs> of oxygen that you can possibly suck into your lungs. And the more you do it and the more they expand, the bigger your voice gets without you having, because you get strong enough to hold this, this, this bigger stream of air that's being streamed in and down all the time. How strong am I right now at my age? See, so well, it's really comfortable. So I go... That's certainly comfortable. It doesn't cost me very much to do it. So, if I were going to sing some music that was a bit bigger, I'd probably limit myself to that amount, right? I'd go, here, let's see, find some music. I'd go, In other words, that would be probably, realistically, my limit today. But do I need to do any bigger? See, this is the other question. You always have to keep it in the back of your mind. Do I need more? Are you just trying to show off? Or what are you trying to do? We're, we're, we're on this 
on these videos that I make, I'm always encourage people to think more like a professional singer. See, is it uh, okay to compromise your tone to get through an opera? Yes, most definitely yes. Right? You've got the greatest tone in the world for one act, and, uh, and all of a sudden you're pooped out and you can't sing the rest of the opera. Well, what good are you? Somebody says, oh, all they do is say, oh, what a pity. What a pity, right? Uh, they said that about, uh, about Mario Lanza, the most beautiful voice in the world, the greatest voice in the world, but he had terrible stamina problems and couldn't last, you know, all the way through these operas. He sang one act, I think he did Calvary Ustacana at, uh, in Covent Garden, and, and he did some concerts because he could do a song and sit down and rest while someone else sang the concerts. I was very close to George London, and George London toured with Mario Lanza. I never met Lanza, but he said the problem was that he would simply get tired, and then he'd get a, have a rest and stand up, and it'd just sound fabulous again. So uh, this kind of singing uh, that you do, where you pick the, the, the uh, size of the stream of air you're using when you're, when you're inhaling. Let's say you're going to inhale it while you're singing. If you do that, how big an inhalation are you going to use, and can you use? See, that's the problem. If you can go, well, so what? Can you sustain it? Can you sing that way? If you really could open your throat up like Mario Delmonico and sing a note, would that be good or bad? It's only good if you have the, the, the power of the respiration, what Manuel Garcia called the super abundance of the breath. If you haven't got that kind of breathing, let's face it, you're not going to be strong enough to, to sustain that. So you have to find one, realistically, that you can sustain. If I'm, 80, I'm 83, if I want to give a, let's say I want to get up and give a concert right now. What could I realistically sing and what could I get through? See? Would I get tired? Breathe? Can I do that for, I don't know how long? What about uh, something like Freischutz? Now, it's a little wolfy maybe, but I can get through it at that speed. If I do it with my, with my uh, uh, smelling the flower, I get... So Maybe I should sing something else, not something that's so much in the middle voice with such a big expression and sentiment all the time. And it's hard when you're trying to weed out and just find a repertoire that is especially for your weak voice or your weak breathing or your weak support system. Uh, uh, you know, you have to be careful how you pick your music. You get so you can't sing anything. So the idea is to, to uh, find the one that you can do at any age. Those of you who are young, you haven't developed your breathing yet. Well, start swimming, doing yoga, and do uh, Caruso famous 40-step exercise. 10 steps breathing in, 10 steps hold, 10 steps exhaling, 10 steps hold empty. Uh, play a wind or brass instrument that you will enjoy. Uh, certainly, uh, Nikolai Gyarov played trombone and uh, clarinet. Giovanni Martinelli played clarinet. Uh, crew, uh, uh, G played uh, saxophone, and you just go down the list. All, there's so many people that have some kind of exaggerated breathing history, and when they do that, there's no doubt that over time their breathing gets much, much stronger. Now, I don't do those things anymore, and I probably should, but I'm, I'm a teacher and I don't perform anymore, so I've sort of gotten my energy going over in a completely different direction. But I still, once in a while, wish I could sing a note. Wouldn't that be nice, you know? Uh, if I could sing a note, or a, a phrase, or an aria, wouldn't it be something? Some of the things I used to excel at, I probably couldn't get through t today. You know, to, if I could at all, I'd have to work out like mad, and who knows what. But probably not. <laughs> Better not to try. So, you have this spectrum from uh, smelling the flower, and remember, you're smelling it in a way that doesn't disrupt the pollen, so it's not just a soft smell, it's a, it's a way where you really do get the fragrance, but you don't sniff any bottom up your air, uh, up your nose. So I'm going to go. Now what can I realistically sing like that? See, think about it. If I go, uh, uh, uh. Et 
tavelera ilko. In other words, that's probably about the maximum that I can do right now. So there's nobody looking back some more. When I was younger, I could have run three times louder. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm not younger, and I can't prove it anymore. And it, we all remember the past, either worse than it was in some ways, or better than it really was in some ways. Let's face it. So I don't really know how big... I know I sang a lot of big opera, and I sang in some big, big places um, with huge orchestras. I remember doing... Uh, a Pendaretzi's Utrenya and Aspen and their big, their big top. They have a huge circus tent. It's the biggest type, you know, the great big top, they call it. And the orchestra had 166 players, 60 of them were brass players, and no microphones. So how did I sing that? Think about that. I don't remember much about the words anymore, but I remember a few phrases. And I remember how I would use what I was using sometimes when I would sing Wagner, uh, or some dramatic, really dramatic part, I would, I would use a much bigger air column, no doubt about it. That kind of stuff. And all you're doing is just belting it out. It's, uh, it's sort of a yelling technique that if you're strong enough, you can use it. And uh, it's not what I recommend anymore. I, I, I can show people all kinds of things, the way to, you know, tricks on how to get through. But there should be only one way to sing. And that is you say, stai, which Tom Brady said was the open throat in the Italian school. So I go, the ah and stai, so I go stai, ah. And then I find a nice, comfortable, a small to medium stream of air that I'm going to constantly breathe in and does the, uh, s the smelling of flower do that for you? If it doesn't give you enough? <laughs> right, can I do that? I think that's enough for Cavalleria, and it would probably realistically, in my age, if I were out, <laughs> so you're crazy enough to hire me to say, I'd probably jump at the chance, I don't know. But anyway, if I did, that would be about probably the maximum I could give. Because uh, maybe sing it smaller, but then you can't make any effects whatsoever, and, and you know, why, why do the role if you can't even uh, at least pretend you're a little desperate in that music? So. Anyway, I thought this would be a nice little uh, thing to think about. You have these possibilities. I like that little group of uh, sound enhancements. Those of you who know the video I did on that. It starts off with uh, the pre-sneeze. And the shape of it inside uh, sort of demands that you give a certain amount of, of air when you sing. You either use an outward emission with a breath stop, or you use an inward flow stream that you can sustain that does not have a breath stop. It runs all the way down your spine. So I'm, you, hear me, you can hear me. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm absolutely uh, pre-sneezing. So I go... Now, the, 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 another famous one is cry. A lot of singers cry all the time. So if I cry, I get that going. It was terrible what happened to you. You wouldn't believe what we saw. It was so horrible. Well, look what's happening to my soft palate. It's going up and forward. And what position and what shape and how big is it? And how much airstream must I provide it? See? So each one sort of has a certain amount. George London's famous thing was, what do you call it? Breathing the mask open. And the mask was straight up here behind the face, all the way up to there. He'd go. And then he'd sing. And 
And those boys, I, I'm telling you, they all had big, fat, wonderful sounds. Leonard Warren and, and, and let's say George London had, was a real held in baritone there, extremely rare. He had a voice like a wham that hit the back of the wall. Um, they were all they were all just just wonderful in their own way. They were different. Nobody sounded exactly alike, but boy, could they sing! Uh, and then let's see the next one is simply lift yourself out up and forward. See what happened? La -la 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 -la. Guess what? It's really not quite as extreme. See, so I can sing like that. La -la 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 Easy, huh? And all I did was lift my salpel up and forward and then provide the inward directional airstream that that space seems to require as a happy, and then I sustain it. And if I can keep going, that's the key. If you're strong enough to keep going a little bit, you can be a very successful singer singing that way. And... Uh, I try to teach my students to, to gradually begin to find what they can do now and never push the voice and never make the voice do anything it doesn't want to do, you know, ever. So you want to make sure that you do not have to ever strain or effort or try to create, you, you do not try to match the, the, the music or the sound you want, you accept the sound you have. And my old teacher, Olga Ries, used to say, you must accept the leftovers. You know, you take a breath like this. Now you're going to, let's say, uh, let's say the, 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 there's a whole group of these enhancers, but you know, the, the happy surprise is one. La, no, what I'm going to sing like that. Here we go. Right? What am I doing? Can I sustain that? If I can, I can probably still sing that kind of music on using the, the, the space and the breath requirement of that technique, which was a happy surprise. We have the hung line. Remember that one? I've done it in other videos. Hung on. Now, which, what, what, what can I do like that? See? Signore, l'amore, per chi There are other things we can do, of course, like Breath of Fire. <laughs> if you do that, what's that going to do to the music, right? Uh, pensier. I didn't use Breath of Fire a lot because I didn't like it, so to make the voice go, ah, but that can only be my voice. Somebody else's voice can do it and uh, be very successful and sound round. And then there's the queen of all, uh, all resonance enhancers, which is the, the smelling the flower. And if you do that, how big an airstream am I using? See? I remember singing Forza Celestino like that, right? In other words, you, this is very much an art, if we can do it right, because it goes beyond skill. The idea is to get all the skills, and all the vocalists and all these things that I have people do are to constantly develop your skills, and then at a certain point, the, you will p perform according to your own strengths and your own weaknesses and your own feelings about the music and your own sense of stage presence and how to make a, an impression on the audience and so forth, okay? Anyway, we're left with, uh, with uh, the idea that you can start an, an, uh, uh, a stream of air moving in into your body and sliding back and down and go... Right? 
It's like the horse rode by and I just climbed in the saddle. And there's no breath stop. Those of you who haven't seen those videos, then a breath stop just means that literally I stop and hold somewhere. So Krista Ludwig, the famous German mezzo-soprano, uh, used to stop her breath between her shoulder blades. So I'd go, and I stop it there. No, 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 I won't be, or whatever it is. No, 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 That's with the breath stop between my shoulder blades. But it doesn't run, keep running in a continuous motion with, with, uh, uh, and an unstopped flow of air. No, 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 then you decide, as you go along, decide if you can do one, if it's more comfortable, if it's easier, it's something to try out, and think about it. This does nothing, you get so up here, you don't do anything. You're so busy going, and the whole thing relaxes and goes down the spine. It's like the whole spine just turns into something nice and easy. Okay? Okay. Hope that gives somebody some good ideas. Okay. Bye.